yesterday, some decisions were made. Decisions that will affect not just today, not just tomorrow, but the future as a whole. I am, of course, talking about our Patreon poll for what to draw for our Wednesday video. About two weeks back, I did this on our Discord just to run an experiment, see what this would look like and how it would work, and it went surprisingly well. I got to do Poppy Playtime, which is a franchise I never really thought about doing before. I got to be just as surprised by what I ended up making for the video as you guys, and it ended up being a pretty popular video, which means that I'm gonna be doing more Poppy Playtime. So keep your eye out for that. Go check out the video if you haven't yet. Uh, I decided to move us from the Discord this week into the Patreon to see how votes could be worked and calculated there. And if you're looking at this image right here, you're probably asking yourself, hey, uh, the thumbnail very clearly showed Undertale. Why is Bendy and the Ink Machine <laughs> obviously the winner on this poll? Well, the reason for that is this. I took this picture at 11 p.m. last night. I usually end up having to rush these videos out, do as much work as I can, but I really only have a couple hours to work on these, which is why I end up losing a character or two in the process. But it ended up being a tie at 8 p.m. when the poll closed. So, I had some decisions to make, because I hadn't voted yet. So, I went with Undertale. I know that sounds bad. And the reason for that is this. For the past probably month, I've made several attempts to actually do an Undertale as Pokemon video. However, every single time, my computer crashed. I lost everything. So this, what you're gonna see today, is actually probably attempt four of trying to get this video out. If you end up seeing a video after this clip, it means that I finally succeeded. If there is no video after this clip, it means that I once again failed at the concept of turning Undertale characters into Pokemon. So your guess is as good as mine is what comes next. Again, I didn't hit every character. I want to kind of gauge the interest of this, hitting some of our key points here, and go from there. If this is something you guys really like, let me know down in the comments. Hop into our Discord link down below and let me know. Hey, I love the Undertale Pokemon. I'd love to see more. I'd love to see Deltarune as Pokemon. I'd love to have these conversations with you guys. And like I said, these conversations have led to the continuation of the Poppy Playtime series. So yeah, that all being said, let's go ahead and hop right into the video. Welcome to the channel, I'm the Sterninator, but my friends call me Stern, and today we're taking on turning Undertale characters into Pokemon. We admittedly won't be getting to every character, but I picked a few of the more memorable ones to dig into. Undertale is an indie game developed by Toby Fox. Damn, it feels good to be a gangster. That is a venture into the concept of, well, decisions, choices, and opportunities. The game changes depending on those decisions to reach one of two possible endings. I wanted to take this idea into account for today's designs, so let's go ahead and get started. Opening up, I knew the hell that would be rained down upon me if I didn't draw Sans. So I needed to get that one out of the way first and foremost. He's the most memorable character in the game and has the greatest evolution depending on choices made throughout your run. He also has a lot of connections within the game to other characters, including his brother Sans, the mysterious WD Gaster, and Toriel. So with that, I went into this idea about form changes and how they can do so based on different held items. To get your Sans Pokemon into its base form, you need to feed it a hot dog. What hot dogs are made out of in the Pokemon world is a mystery to me, but not one that I'm interested in dwelling too far into. So we'll ignore it and move on for now. The design was a bit of a chore because I wanted to take these designs in a direction that wouldn't be a one-to-one -one iteration, but instead hopefully expanded on the concepts already at play. Tying in some of that Pokemon mystery and excitement into these designs that were made to be purposefully kind of simple. So I want this possible snowman skeleton mashup idea. Given that Sans lives in the snowy area of Snowden, I also wanted to take into account that form change mechanic, so I left some areas available for a transitional phase. For example, the odd shape of the head, as I'm sure you'll notice in a little bit, mimics Sans' 
kind of change into his darker persona as we see throughout the games, and we'll get more into that as we get to it a little bit later. A prize tool that can help us later. Also, given that he's in a dapper little jacket for the entirety of the game, it kind of just made sense for me to make him ice type. I'm sure that there are a million reasons for him to be any other types, but with the integrated mechanic I needed to keep some of those freed up for other options. And I still feel like the ice type really works. I know you're gonna say, Oh, he should be dark type given that ending of the story, or he should be psychic type because he's just always where he needs to be, almost like he's teleporting. I don't know, whatever, but I know that there's a lot of reasons for him to have various different typings. I went with ice type. I like to picture his glowing blue eye kind of rolling around in his skull similar to Dusk Skull too. That's just one of those design elements that I remember seeing and just thinking it was one of the most interesting ideas I'd seen in a Pokemon design, and so wanted to carry it over here. I will say the reason for the hot dog is the form change method is due to the in-game event where Sans convinces you as the player to balance a series of hot dogs on your head. It also plays into the food theme between him and his brother, which again, we'll see in a bit. And so here is Sanspact. For those of you non-font freaks out there, Sans actually means without, and so I used the idea of the names translating to incorporate the without term. Sanspact is a reference to the deal that Sans and Toriel have that he wouldn't hurt any humans, as well as a play on the idea of packed snow. As mentioned before, this Pokemon is an ice type, but also normal type, with the shiny being a play on those sand sonas that were popping up for a while after the game was initially released, this one having the red coat instead of the classic blue. I know what you're thinking. If the Pokemon reverts to its base form with a hot dog, then what happens if it's given spaghetti? Well, it would have to be the most perfectly perfect plate of spaghetti, but let's go ahead and assume you're able to cook up something that's well worth it to this Pokemon, you know, makes his time more valuable. As once he's eaten that delectable dish, he's sure to form change into our Papyrus-based Pokemon. This one was difficult. I know that I say that a lot, but even in my other four attempts at this video, Pap Daddy was always the problem child. How to balance the fact that he's a skeleton, hard to draw as a Pokemon, with this bulky armor, hard to draw as a Pokemon, and his personality, just hard to be around. I decided to just jump headlong into the ridiculousness that is Papyrus. No, how do I make it look cool? No, how do I make it look super Pokemon-esque or cutesy? Just full on, a closest to a one-to-one -one that I think we get in the entirety of this video. I found that focusing on the armor just made him look too beefy, made him look too masculine, too harsh, too much like the warrior that he wants to be, but ultimately isn't. Focusing on the skeletal aspects made him feel a little too creepy, or it made him feel a little bit not himself. It made him feel just too depressing, and he's not a depressing character. So I ended up playing on what makes Papyrus Papyrus, the odd blend of characteristics that form this lovable, albeit sometimes infuriating presence. And true, he may look like a character out of Mega Man X, but I think I'm kind of okay with that. He should feel like a superhero, right? That's the whole motif, that's the whole inspiration, that's the whole design process, is he should feel like a superhero until you get to meet him, right? I kind of felt myself falling into this trap with the design, where I couldn't figure out what I wanted to do, how to make it work the way that it was meant to, and I felt trapped. But luckily for me, it was a trap set by our favorite spaghetti-loving wannabe hero, Papyrus himself. And so, playing up on the same pattern that we had with Sans Pact of using Sans meaning without, this is Sans Sphere meaning without fear. I went ahead and changed up the spelling a little bit just to make it a little bit more fun. This is the soldiering Pokemon, not the soldier Pokemon. He may soldier on, but definitely isn't your typical soldier. But in this form, in a Pokemon world, I think Sans would fit in perfectly, and I think Papyrus would fit in even more perfectly-er. 
So I went ahead and made him normal fighting type, finally living up to the dream of being a proud warrior, a soldier, a hero. His shiny shows a more villainous aspect to him, utilizing those blues from his tights over the red, and I think that's really cool, making almost an enemy out of this alternate version of himself. You can see he gets a bump to his attack that just makes him feel like he is a superhero. I'm glad that I could do this for Papyrus. Pap Daddy always deserves it, and I'm glad that I could be the one to give it to him. Before we move on to the other forms, yes, you heard me right, we aren't quite done with this Pokemon line yet, I wanted to work on a Toriel Pokemon. This is the first friendly face that you come across in the world of Undertale, and justly, she deserves a, um, uh, sorry, uh, hey, what's this Sunflora doing here? Can somebody just like, uh, yeah, okay, yeah, great, perfect, there we go. Anyway, as I was saying, Toriel is a force of the story, and your interactions with her not only shape her as a character, but also shape you, the player. Treat her harshly, and there will be hell to pay, but treat her well and like the mother that she always wanted to be, and you'll find that despite it all, you're still you. A bit of a personal take on this design. When I was a kid, the nearby agricultural center attached to the high school had this animal that I'd never seen before. It was described to me as a bull with the ears of a rabbit, the hump of a camel, and the coloring of a sheep. This animal was called a Brahma. And I thought it was such a cool and intriguing animal that Toriel naturally fit the vibe for. So I decided to make her a Brahma. First of its kind in the Pokemon world. I do wonder though, wouldn't it be interesting to throw some Asgorian sexual dimorphism into the balance of this Pokemon and potential evolutionary qualities? Something to think about. Maybe something for another video. I don't know. I'm still battling back and forth whether this would be a series or not, so why don't we head on down to the description below, where we can find the Discord and the other places that you can get a hold of me and, and kind of show your support for the channel. But further down, if you run down to the comments, let me know if you want more Undertale as Pokemon. I had a lot more ideas for this project than I had time. And so this is Brahmadam, a form of Brahma and Madam. It is the patient Pokemon, as it's known for teaching those who come into contact with it. Maybe this is even the Pokemon, rather than the human, who teaches you how to catch Pokemon. Wouldn't that be interesting? That would be weird. Weird. She's a pure normal type for the moment. Like I said, a lot more ideas than I had the ability to get down in this video, but for the shiny, I went with the golden calf type of aesthetic. You can see she's all about the flops, whether it be the ears or the wings on her back that are just extensions of Toriel's dress in the game. And yeah, I think it's a really cool concept. Her tail is a metronome used for teaching rhythm and movement, much is the structure of the game. And on her hump, she has this white tuft of hair that's almost like a flame, the beacon of hope in this weird and dying world. Hey, speaking of a weird and dying world, in some runs of Undertale, when specific choices are made, we can unlock a special boss. In the game, Sans unleashes all get out, and in this Pokemon world, Sans Pact can finally live up to its name, as the deal of peace is broken. This form is unlocked when Sans Pact or Sans Fear is fed a bone. This is a symbol of how Sans lets loose his darker side after his brother is killed. And also, if you're feeding your skeleton Pokemon a bone, maybe you should have someone checking in on you from time to time, get some help. That's like feeding a slowpoke tail to a slowpoke, which the Pokemon company would never allow in their canon, let alone their games. That's just twisted and weird. Regardless, this form gains a whole lot more power. I mean, a whole lot. So perhaps it would be a specific bone? Maybe if your Sans or Papyrus based Mon faints in battle one too many times, or if you release it at a graveyard type area? Maybe that would be the way that you're able to get this special kind of bone. Unlocking its true and darkest potential. Think something like Skull Greymon from the Digimon anime. A powerful Digimon, but is only brought out through stress and forced Digivolution. This form possesses tremendous power, that's true. But you'd have to go out of your way to allow your Pokemon to be hurt in order to unlock it. Is that completed National Dex really worth it? 
Let me know in the comments below. I would absolutely go out of my way to make sure that my Pokemon got hurt so that I could have a full Dex. Or no, I care too much about my Pokemon. They're like real animals to me. Both perfectly viable ways of looking at the franchise and playing the games. Just, I'm curious. I'm the type of guy who always keeps my starter on my team because I'm, I don't wanna hurt their feelings. <laughs> Things are getting a little too spooky and a little too real. This is feeling a lot closer to one of my Monday ARG videos than a poll winner Wednesday one. Anyway, this is Sans Alone, the name meaning without and alone. Kind of without being by itself. It's a play on the characters or the, I guess, addendums to a character that we see when Sans reaches this point and he gets these crazy cool skull dragon type things that form his attacks. So thusly, it's a ghost dragon type. It's also the backup Pokemon, being that it's two Pokemon in one. Think maybe Tandemouse, if it was a dragon and a ghost and evil. Its body is comprised of this weird ghostly energy and the shiny brings in that purple to remind you that it is a ghost type. It's not absolutely massive, but I do picture those heads being able to separate and float around, really kind of surround the thing that they're attacking. The base total is a lot more powerful than the other forms, but not crazy powerful, not unbeatable by any form. <laughs> we'll get to that shortly. Uh, I just, I think this one was a ton of fun and I will admit translating those skull heads from the 2D sprites into the 3D without just mimicking other stuff that I've seen online was, um, it was, a, it was, it was time. It was a big, it was a big time uh, constraint. <laughs> Moving on to the last of our skeleton boy forms, we have the design that I actually had been kind of waiting for. Even back before making that first initial poll, when I was trying to get this video done and failing miserably with crash after crash, this was the Pokemon that I had in mind. The one that I was the most excited to draw. I picture that this Pokemon form is unlocked by feeding your Sans Pack, Sans Fear, or Sans Alone a mysterious goo found in the lab somewhere. Maybe this Pokemon wasn't meant to exist, but yet here it is. The WD and WD Gaster actually stands for Wingdings, a connection that he has to his two sons, where Sans is a type of font, often referencing Comic Sans in the way that he types and speaks in game, and Papyrus speaking in Papyrus font, WD Gaster speaks in Wingdings. And it's so odd to me that he's been such a grounding force for the fans of this game, because he only appears slightly and screams and runs off, but his entire build for the game is so different. He doesn't have any collision physics and just kind of runs off. In a game built around deep story, decisions, choices, and opportunity, he stands out, as you don't have any with him. I will say I'm a big fan of masks. Maybe that's one of the reasons I love Inscription so much. And while he doesn't wear a mask, there's that same eeriness to his design, as though the face just wasn't right. I wanted to find a fun way to capture that essence and that off-putting demeanor while still juggling the Pokemon style into it. And so I got these funny little shapes to make his bizarre grimace. I picture the connection to Sans Pact being the giant hand that this Pokemon carries around with it. The head of Sans Pact is reminiscent of the lower jaw to Sans alone, and both Sans Pact and Sans Fear share that same goofy grin, maybe with the coat of Sans Pact forming up, turning red, and becoming that cloak that Sans Fear has. I picture the snowball transforming into a bald fist for this Pokemon, rising out from underneath it and becoming this extra entity that floats alongside it. Maybe it's far reaching, but that's kind of the joke. And so keeping up with the same naming convention, this is Sandy Gast. I'm totally joking. This is Sansanity, a play on Sans and Sanity without Sanity. It is a dark psychic type and is the withdrawn Pokemon. It gains some power being on par with Sans alone. And for the shiny, I'm with this purple color scheme because most people, despite it not being in the art, refer to WD Gaster as having this purple undershirt. And I think that's kind of cool. So I went ahead and input that as well. I also made this floating hand, which I think is super cool. I don't know how it would work, but I picture kind of that psychic energy emanating from that dark hole within the hand, almost kind of like Shedinja. If you look into it, it will absorb your soul and you'll fall in, be lost forever. I think there's going to be a lot of weird folklore about this Pokemon. It's definitely one of my favorite of the prompt today. And 
I hope it's one of yours as well. Let me know in the comments below which one is your favorite, because now we're gonna move on. Uh, hold, what's uh, what's happening? It, oh God. it's that Sunflora again. Okay, listen, Sunflora, I understand that you want to be a part of the video, but. You just can't, you're not cool enough. You're not even related to Undertale in any way. Oh my God. Okay, so I guess we have one more Pokemon to get through today. If you played the game, specifically if you played it on Pacifist Run, like I did my first time, you'll know that the big bad, the enemy of the entire game, is the little dummy that you beat up at the beginning. He ends up returning as the sinister and evil Flowey. And I remember playing the game and just being so shocked that this was the direction that we were going, that the enemy ends up becoming this first thing that you had to kill, this thing that you had to. In a pacifist run, the one thing that you really kind of had to attack. And so in the end, it seeks revenge going to the point of turning off the game, having you believe that you're restarting, glitching out your computer. I'm beginning to wonder if maybe that's what caused my initial struggles with the first four attempts at this video. If maybe the Pokemon itself didn't want me to see it, if maybe it knew that this was the big end-all be-all to the video and decided, no, you, Stern, don't get that chance. Or maybe I'm reading too much into it. Who knows? All things are possible. All possibilities exist in some form of dimension or another. But I thought, how am I going to design Flowey as a Pokemon? Well, I could use something much the same way that Flowey is just a flower that seems inconspicuous. That already kind of exists. That you wouldn't even think about when doing a design for Pokemon in a new type of way. How do you do that? How do you flip the script? Well, use a Pokemon that already exists, and luckily we already have a Sunflower Pokemon that is widely regarded as one of the most forgettable. Even when doing this and recording this right now, I completely forgot that Sunflora had a pre-evolution in Sunkern, and yeah, I, I just completely forgot about it. So what Pokemon would want revenge for being abused and forgotten? Sunflora makes sense that this is kind of the direction that we end up going with the design. I even in the end decided to give it that red rim lighting and that red line work to make it feel more mega. Am I saying that this is a mega Sunflora? No. If I were to do a mega Sunflora, I think I'd go a very different direction, but I wanted it to feel like it is emanating that power, that same power that force quit me out of my game when I was playing. That same power that tricked me into thinking the game was over, into thinking my character had died, and kind of just hijacking my computer. I've played a lot of games that do stuff similar since, but at the time of Undertale's release, it was the first game I'd ever experienced that did that. Flora and Foe, meaning fake, thus kind of loosely and lazily jamming Foe into the name Sunflora, because this Pokemon based on Flowey is kind of just a hodgepodge of ideas. Thus it is grass ghost type. It's based on the dummy that you defeated. The dummy who later you find their sibling, cousin, I don't quite remember, who says, I want revenge because I am a ghost haunting a dummy that then finds itself, the original form, haunting a flower. For the colors, I wanted to go with this more cosmic and Cthulhu inspired design. And while I know I didn't get everything in there, I mean, you've seen the thing if you're watching this. It's a computer, it's flowers, it's fleshy bits. It's so many various things. And uh, maybe we can put that into the ability because as you may have noticed from my other videos or whether you're a new person or someone returning, I do this a lot. I don't include the abilities in the descriptions for Pokemon because I like hearing what you guys think of that. So give me an ability down in the comments below that you think fit this Pokemon. In fact, give me some abilities that fit all of the Pokemon from this video. I'd love to hear how you're able to incorporate the story and the personalities into the designs that we've come up with today. You can see that this thing gets a tremendous boost in power, far beyond that of your average Sunflora, losing a lot of kind of what made it this meek and forgettable Pokemon to become this devious monstrosity. 
And with that, we have another viewer picked video done. If you want to take part in this type of challenge or game or whatever you want to call it, head on over to the Patreon that's down linked below. As a free member, you can take part in these polls to decide what the next video is going to be. I usually drop the prompt list Monday night at 8 p.m. Pacific Standard Time so that by Tuesday 8 p.m. Pacific Standard Time we have our answer and with that with the description down below where you can find the discord as well and join a part of our community it sounds like you know where to find me so I will catch you in the next one bye <laughs>